Good morning. I'm delighted to be joined this morning by um, Ian Scott, Director for UK and Ireland of Dubai Tourism. Um, thank you very much for joining us, Ian. You're Good morning. Um, so, Dubai, I mean, obviously, it's a destination that has um, fascinated us for years, but can it really still provide the wow factor, or, or basically, have we all seen it now? What, what's going on at the moment? Um, Dubai is an amazing place, isn't it? Because 20 years ago, you have to remember, it didn't really, well, certainly didn't exist in the, f in the, uh, the way that we know it now. And, um, and the pace of change has been so uh, rapid that I think people have come to expect that that will always continue. And um, whilst on one hand it will, we will always continue to develop and improve and change and add new products, it uh, probably won't ever be as, as crazy as it was in the <laughs> 90s and uh, <coughs> early part of this uh, of the year 2000. Um, so yeah, I mean, 20 years ago it, we, we were a desert. There was a road through the middle. Today, you all know what Dubai's like um, with the, with the skyscrapers and the beaches and so on. However, it's it is still changing. And so this year, if you look at just this year alone, actually, on the Palm, uh, we all know and love Atlantis at the top of the Palm there. But this year, we've now got one and only um, on the Palm, which is on the uh, at the very tip of the crescent, just very close to one and only Royal Mirage. So you can get a, a, a boat transfer from one to the other. Okay. Um, Jumeirah opened their latest property called Zabil, which is just further up the Crescent and uh, Kempinski opened uh, last week as well so there's still a lot of change in terms right, of so hotels, hotels opening, yeah. um, so even if you've got customers who have been to Dubai before and they want something new there will always be new hotels and, and you know you must remember so. Arman is just a year old um, and so there's, there's a lot of you know very exciting very new hotels that um that you know, the chances are your, your customers have not yet been to, um, and then this year is still very exciting. And next year, you know, hotels like iconic hotels like Versace um, are sort of getting close to completion, and that will, uh, I believe, be opening in 2012. To be honest, but it's still not far away now. And still um, very exciting times then. It's still not, yeah. very <laughs> exciting times. And you know, you look around downtown Dubai, the fountains and the tower, Burj Khalifa. There is so yeah. much, there is so much going on. So it's why we have such a good repeat business. To be honest with you, because you you know you can't ever say that you've seen and you've done, done it Dubai because <laughs> it's always it's always changing, yeah. I suppose the only problem that you might have is obviously the names that you've just filled off for me there, a lot of them are ultra luxurious designer yeah. labels. I mean, do you often get the objection leveled at you that it's frankly too expensive for people to come? Yeah, and I think that in some respects it's, it, it, it's the fault of the tourist board because many years ago we talked very happily about the Burj <laughs> yeah. Al Arab and the, the, you know, the bridge suite at Atlantis and everything else, and um, those do come at a, a, a high ticket yeah. price. Um, but, you know, what you must remember is whilst they're the ones that perhaps grab the headlines because they've got their own marketing budgets as well um, in between Armani and Burj Al Arab you've got you know the Ibis uh, more than one Ibis actually right. and lots of other affordable hotels so um, I think it's really important to remember if you want some you know total luxury of course it's there yeah F from a hotel perspective also dining experiences helicopter transfers it's you've got it but actually um, if you've got a customer on a budget and they you know they're worried about the affordability of Dubai the hotels clearly you've got a choice of hotels from two star to seven right. star so you mean you know you need to make that choice from dining um, we have all inclusive in Dubai, which many people oh, don't realise. No, I it's think that's something you never associate with the destination. Absolutely, at all. and it's and it's an oasis actually. It's Jebel Ali, which is a little bit right. further out of town, but it's a, it's a wonderful product. Great newly refurbished rooms actually on the beach. Great Some great, great families, activities. Because that's obviously always a problem, isn't it? You go in with the kids, it's hot. Absolutely. You don't want to constantly be forking out lots and lots yeah. of money for coke. Yeah, and it's a beautiful hotel. So yeah, that's all inclusive. And there, there are one or two others. Move and pick actually, both at Embattuta Gate, which uh, is quite a new hotel, but also down on Jumeirah Beach walk they're doing right. um, sort of all-inclusive upgrades as well um, um, but sticking with dining half board can save a family or anybody actually quite a lot of money uh, so do look out for the hotels with the half board upgrades there are many of them sometimes there might be a minimum stay sometimes there are not right. Jumeirah Madinat have been doing a half board this summer wow. um, and they've got I think it's well it's over 30 restaurants to choose from so from a, a, so a half it's board, it's barely a half board not really. you can't get through yeah. all of those restaurants yeah. in, in a four or five night stay um, but then also transportation, you know, the Arbor, the taxis are very cheap, the right. metro is very cheap. Um, experiences, you know, the fountain, I don't know whether you've seen or even heard of Dubai Fountain, which is spectacular. Um, at the base of Burj Khalifa in downtown Dubai, that's free. Very you know, you just didn't really even watch <laughs> that for free. Uh, and there are many other things, family things as well, you know, the, the aquariums and so on, which are very inexpensive. So right. it is, you know, it is what you want it to be in terms of affordability and luxury. But um, the quality is never compromised, but you can choose your own budget level, to be honest.
great. Oh, well, that's, um, that's encouraging news then. So it, it's still, still an option for families then this summer if people are still undecided. For sure. And I think well, there are two things there, actually. This summer, th without a doubt, the prices come down in summer. And yeah. um, the reason being, um, a lot of people say it's just too hot. Yeah, um, and I, th up, yeah. I think we have to remember that, you know, there are, and I've just come back from Egypt and that was hot. Um, <laughs> the difference is, I think, in Dubai, it, it, because it's a new city, we've got this advantage that it was built knowing that it's a hot destination and we're yeah. building this tourism infrastructure and therefore you know we talk about shopping malls and whilst I don't like that expression shopping malls um, they're different in Dubai they're sort of um, they're places where people meet they're social um, gathering places and you know you can go in there and the attractions that you can find inside a shopping mall you wouldn't realize you were inside a shopping mall because um, you've got some quite special attractions haven't you for um for children i mean everyone's heard of ski dubai but i mean there's a lot more than that out there in the malls isn't there for kids there is and family is uh, well arguably our biggest growth market and right. whilst people you're right people do know things like ski dubai and probably now they do know aquaventure and wild wadi which are the yeah. two wonderful water parks um but again it's linked to the summer i guess you know you can go indoors and have some great yeah. family experiences too so um, the Dubai Mall is a great example. It's a huge, huge um, shopping mall, which is just beside the lake where the fountains are, beside the tower. So, you know, this downtown area has become um, really popular, actually. And in, in, the, in that shopping mall there, for a family especially, Kidzania is a, is a city. It's a small city for children. Everything is in miniature. Um, <clears throat> my children love, like most children, I guess, love to role play. Yeah. Um, and it's the ultimate in role play. So wow. they can Dressing live in this little city long. for a day. <laughs> yeah, and there's a, there's a fire station, a police station, a, a, a bank. They, you know, they earn money, not real money, but uh, money for their job. Um, and they can deposit the money, withdraw the money. <laughs> there's a university so they can oh, they you know, become that. educated. And, you know, they're very well looked after. They, the parents... You know, very handily can leave the little wristband on the children <laughs> and head off to the shops or the or the uh, other restaurants. Um, well, that's always a welcome break. It is absolutely, yeah. and just beside that, actually, right next door is is Sega World, which. Um, is this is for slightly older children it's an indoor theme right. park uh indoor roller coasters lots of high octane um stuff for slightly older children so and lots again and lots for kids to do yeah and again in there you can leave the you can leave the children with a wristband yeah. and head off and More do some shopping. <laughs> exactly yeah so the family product right. is probably quite surprising yeah, so, yeah. and of course with com combined with the fact you've got the beach as well so you yeah know, uh, that's uh, obviously uh, free completely <laughs> yeah there's yeah even if you're in it's a good point though even if you're in um a hotel which is in the city there is parts so there's a big part of the beach which is public access yeah. so free obviously if you're staying in Jumeirah Madden yeah. at Jumeirah those beaches are private to their happen. hotels yeah. but if you're in the city of course there are you green parks where out. you can barbecue yeah. and have great time in the parks as you would at home you know yeah um, but yeah you can get onto Jumeirah beach and beach, yeah. access is free to Brilliant. that part of the beach I suppose another thing people possibly are concerned about with Dubai is that obviously it's very near as you say it's shot up in 20 years and we do hear about the biggest the brightest the brashest but we don't hear much about the sort of tradi you know the original sort of right cultural roots of the <coughs> place i mean is there anything to see that's sort of not 20 years old or yeah and it, in some respects it's one of the the, the things that we, we 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 deal with a lot is people describing dubai as fake and actually yeah. that's not it's not fair because it's new the, you know, the part of dubai that we talk about that we know um, whether that's the Palm or even you know the Sheikh Zayed Road as, as it is today, it's not fake at all. It's just new. It, right, you know, Twenty yeah. years ago, it didn't exist. But Dubai isn't a new city. It hasn't just been developed uh, right. for tourism. So right. um, uh, no, I think part of the issue is yeah. completely. I mean, yeah. you fly into the airport and you head down to your five-star luxury hotel and you have a wonderful time and it's you know that's brilliant and then you go home and then you think well there's no culture. Um, there is. It's just you've got to know where to go and you've got to look for it and. Um, the, it's it's called uh, downtown. It's called sorry, old Dubai. So you go into the old city, right. um, and it's around the creek. So a lot of people might know where the creek is, um, right. and scattered around there, there's lots of um, well clear evidence of how Dubai was before right. oil. And you, know, you can do things like. Um, Bastakia is an area where you can do walking tours um, and it shows how people used to live before um, things like oil were discovered and right. you know, uh, beside there is the museum which um, it's built within a fort and the fort actually is the oldest building in Dubai which is 18th century so when people think there's no history in Dubai we've got a, bu a building which is 18th century housing the fort housing the museum rather and you can you know see how people used to make their living diving for pearls um, fishing and so on and so forth um, the souks taking a trip on the Arbor across the creek it's a very very different experience to uh, your yeah. hotel on the beach but it's yeah. a really nice contrast and uh, yeah without a doubt if somebody wants a bit of culture see some heritage meet the local people 
it's a great place to go. I think people do want more and more on holiday. I think so. And it's why, actually, we, we, we promote um, quite heavily Ramadan as well. Often people think that Ramadan is not a good time to go yeah. because it, it, all people realise is or think about is the fasting. <laughs> people not eating. Yeah. Um, and you know, if you're a Muslim, then that's yeah. absolutely the yeah. appropriate thing to do. As a holiday maker, of course you can eat. It's just not maybe yeah. in public places. Yeah. But the advantage of Ramadan is at the end of um, the day at sunset, the locals come out and they break and their fast. it's almost fast. a bit of a party atmosphere. And it's a real party yeah. atmosphere. Yeah. And it's a great opportunity to meet with the locals and Definitely. take part in those iftar yeah. feasts, which if you're not there in Ramadan, you can't do that yeah, so actually true. there's yeah. a real it's a good time to go Ramadan for a, a cultural experience brilliant so what is going to be the next big thing for Dubai then what is the, the new sort of next wow factor it's a funny thing this because I think to a degree um, Dubai's made a rod for its own back in this <laughs> yeah. respect because uh, you know we build the most luxurious, most expensive, the biggest, yeah, the tallest, totally, yeah. and uh, and therefore it creates an expectation. And I think that perhaps what we should do is um, yeah, no doubt there are things in the pipeline, but yeah. I think almost it's better to focus on what you know what the product is there. You know, yeah. if uh, if you knew about Kidzania, if all your guests mm. had been to Kidzania, um, and if they all knew about the old town and the, the then I would understand people saying yeah. it needs to reinvent yeah. itself. But I don't think we're There's there. There's so yet. much out there that's not quite been communicated. For sure, yeah. yeah. And I think even with the new hotels that I mentioned before, you know, even yeah. if people have been a year ago, two years ago, if they went back today, it's a different Some place. Some of those properties are going to offer an entirely different experience. Absolutely, the so. marina. You know, that's a brand new part of town that I think right. a lot of people wouldn't have been to yet. Yeah. It's beautiful. Um, and so I just think it's good to. Just just focus on what we've got. We've got an amazing product, very diverse yeah. product. Um, and when you, new things come along, we'll announce them and we'll sort yeah. of introduce them to you all. But, uh, but you I don't think, need to wait. It's, I don't think so. it's ready. <laughs> there's, there's plenty to do in Dubai, yes. Excellent. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining us today, Ian. You're and um, we look forward to sending uh, lots more of our customers to Dubai. Thank you.